Notice how your feeling state shifts. Your sense of being or identity begins to resonate with a different frequency than the person sitting in this room kind of frequency. So you're no longer listening to a dude inside a room. You're actually from the void of source. You're occupying the frequency state of Shambhala. Uh, my question was was sort of like that if you would envision yourself um, stepping stepping up, um, as what would that manifest? So, for example, see yourself two weeks or a month later in the future, you stepping up to a higher level, and that then what would uh, yeah as what would that manifest? What would others see? Um, what you picked up on? Was that your question? Back then? Yeah. I, that's, <laughs> but it was, I think it was related, related to our conclusion based on your question. But I thought your initial question for me, before we turned it into an assignment, but I don't quite remember what it was, but it was along the lines of the next phase of Shambhala, I think. Mm -hmm. The manifestation of that, like speeding it up, something along those lines. Do you remember that question? You said within one month. Yeah. Cool. And so that is what you just shared is more or less the assignment. Because then I said, I don't feel like doing that right now, maybe in like two or three days. So maybe we can do that tomorrow. Um, but then in the meantime, it'd be good if everybody steps up and embodies that. But also from the point of view of if I wasn't here, how would you further this? If you were the quote unquote leader of this group right now, right here in this segment of time, you were sitting here, so to speak, and it was on your shoulders, so to speak, to envision as well as instruct the next few weeks. And just what comes up for you or what arises out of that exercise. So if you haven't practiced that yet, just practice that um, sometime tonight and just see what comes. No pressure at all. Just if you were the leader of this kind of thing, what would be different? What would you do? What, what do you envision? How would you guide this group if I wasn't here? Let's say I had to fly off somewhere for a month and you were appointed to do the sessions. What would you have to be in touch with? What's the vision you're connected to? And what's the approach you see? And we can kind of start right now, just to give a brief glimpse of that, and then you can practice it on your own tonight. So maybe close your eyes for this. Because um, also, <clears throat> not that that necessarily is your perception, but I know sometimes it has been some people's perception, but I'm not some kind of a magical being, you know? I'm just incarnate just like you guys are. So the only way that we've created what we've created so far, both in terms of the clarity of the teachings, but also the, the movement, the communal movement around that, <clears throat> and like the whole spirit of it and any project we create, all of that has just been has just been an intention, has been an approach, something that is replicable, at least in its way of doing. Now, for you, something else might emerge. But the approach is replicable for virtually anybody. So just to step into that, to not, if you have any projections left of, oh, Ben came here like fully enlightened as a baby, and uh, <laughs> everywhere he placed his footsteps, there was a lotus flower <laughs> sprouting up out of the ground. <laughs> His mom and dad never had sex, <laughs> but magically. <laughs> and he came here with all this crystal clear. And he, that's not the case, so you know. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Another bubble pop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> so. 
So I'm just a dude in that sense. And I'm just a person in that sense. And um, so any one of you could have done this, what we've done so far. Any one of you could have led this, what we've led so far, and what we will continue to lead. So it's not a magical thing. It's a matter of stepping into it, having the will to believe in it and to begin it. So close your eyes. For a minute or so, go to the zero. Just snap to zero. Meaning, release all conclusions, all assumptions as much as you can and contact that ground zero of your being. And just stay empty for a minute. I promise this time it will be actually one minute. <laughs> Give or take. <laughs> Give or take a minute or ten. <laughs> no, truly. Just for a minute, go to zero. Ignore all assumptions that come up. Just stay empty, not knowing anything, basically. Ignore all knowledge. It's like you're forgetting your whole life just for this short period of time. You relinquish all memory, disown all memory. Just being, being with no memory, no knowledge. But you can allow yourself to feel the presence of God in whatever way that works for you. The presence of the I am, perhaps, of I. So it's not just a dead zero. It is an awake and alive, an existent zero. It's a zero that exists. Where you can feel or hear or sense the heartbeat of the Creator. As you stay naturally rooted in this alive zero, God's heartbeat, God's silence, the space beyond all ideas and inceptions, gradually tune into the seed frequency of heaven on earth. Just the seed frequency of it. It's okay if images come, but it's not about the images. <coughs> For now, it's just about feeling what the intention of that, that's at the very source, a 
of all of its manifestations feels like deep within your consciousness, subtle level, seed intention awareness, just that. It's just a feeling, deep feeling state. There's still no knowledge per se. It's just a feeling free of knowledge, free of form. So you just kind of stay in that zero. Zero is kind of like the soil, that space, the womb of creation. And that initial intention, just the feeling of the intention, the frequency of it, is like dropping the seed into this soil, into this womb. And you're just staying right there, not adding anything with the mind, just staying with the feeling of Shambhala. And let's say you are that intention. You actually, that's actually what you choose to be. <coughs> it's not an idea that you have, it's an idea that the Creator has, and you are that. You are, in that sense, its leader, its shepherd. Notice how your feeling state shifts, your sense of being or identity begins to resonate with a different frequency than the person sitting in this room kind of frequency. So you're no longer listening to a dude inside a room, you're actually from the void of source. You're occupying the frequency state of Shambhala just the frequency, the core of it, the whole essence of it, the seed contains the entire tree. Still no knowledge is needed. Still no perception about it is necessary. It's just the intention at its very root before it becomes manifest. Just the intention. Just assume that state, become one with that state, that feeling. And in that seed, it's already accomplished. The tree already exists in that seed. All the manifestations of Shambhala exist inside of that seed frequency. And take complete ownership of that. Appropriate it. Occupy it. Become it. Take ownership of it in the sense of leadership, mastery, embodiment not in terms of possession, just in terms of occupying it, choosing it. Feel the support of the infinite creator behind you as you pour yourself into the seed frequency. Massive support. Unlimited power. Then from this state, allow the intuitions and impulses and the clarity, the beginnings of the specifics, the beginnings of the application or direction of it, to 
naturally emerge if they do. If they don't, it's not at all an issue. Don't try to conjure it up. It's more important that you stay in this state. And then it will come when it comes. It might be a, a picture, an image. It might be a smell or a sound or a sensation. Or it might be a sense of how to further direct the focus of this group, further harmonize it. But don't limit what can come. Don't question what can come. It doesn't have to come in any form that you know. It doesn't even have to apply to us being here right now. Don't limit it. It might be something unexpected. But as long as you occupy the seed intention clearly, the intention of a truly happy, abundant, liberated planet in contact with extraterrestrial intelligences, a docking station for all kinds of civilizations, where there's an abundant, harmonious flow all across the planet, and the planet itself is livening up, being refreshed, cleansed, beautiful, nourishing, healthy, and all people that you meet are naturally sincere and have a smile on their face that is uncontrived. You stay in the seed of that feeling, of that intent. From there, living from there, feeling and breathing and thinking from there, what do you sense? What do you see? What do you hear, perhaps, when you listen to Source? This vast backdrop of pure potential. And gently request for an inspiration to come. It doesn't have to come immediately, but do put yourself in the receptive state of some kind of a clear impulse. And again, it can come now, or it can come later today, it can come two days from now, it doesn't matter. But request to get some kind of vision or clarity from this state about the manifestation of this on Earth. Welcome that in. Welcome those impulses in. And don't doubt it when it comes. Just allow it when it comes. It may not make perfect sense to your mind, but still trust it. And then if you feel ready, you can use a little bit of willpower to put yourself in the assumption of being the leader of this manifestation. What if you were the main channel for this vision and everybody else was 
more or less oblivious to it, or at least not in the position of leading it or translating it directly to others? What if that was your duty? What if that was your appointed task? Who would you have to become? Slash, who are you already as that leader of this seed intention? <coughs> How would it shift your priorities, perhaps, or the way you position yourself in your own personal life? What would fall away is no longer relevant. And what would suddenly take a hold of you with a grace and a beauty and a power and a love that is beyond this earth, but wanting to flow freely into this world, to the hearts of all beings here. To awaken them to this vision so they can all co activate it and co inhabit that state. And then, naturally, through the laws of creation, unleash the manifestation of it naturally. Who would you be if you were that leader? If you were that creator? you were that channel. And if any doubt or stress arises, simply bring yourself back to the seed feeling of it already being contained in the seed in its entirety. It is already accomplished in seed form in its entirety. And feel how true you'd have to become to accept that duty slash honor. How it leaves no room for personal fancy or idle curiosity or this is cool, I want to be a part of this. None of that exists. When you truly take it on, as your only state of being, when you become it. And it is not serious. It is only joyful. Any seed thought that the Creator has for itself, no matter how large in scope, <coughs> is birthed out of the joy for self-expression and self-knowledge. It's not birthed out of worry or concern. So yes, it requires earnestness and totality and devotion on behalf of the channel, but its essence is joy and free of consequences, free of failure or success. None of that exists. In the seed, it is already accomplished. You are already that. You 
you are Shambhana. Take a deep breath and relax and know that you are that, and that it is done. And let come whatever comes. Just stay in a free, joyful state, not possessing anything, and yet knowing where your allegiance lies, because you want to. Because it's exciting, because it's next level, and because it would serve so many. And because what else the fuck are you going to do while you're here? It's not fun unless it's epic. And it's not epic unless it's fun. <laughs>